Ponade, the Gaelic word for pony, also translates into English as small. Connemara ponies are mentioned in history books as far back as 1400, and these horses probably existed in this part of Ireland for thousands of years before that. Traditional Celtic music and a love of horses combine in the scores of annual horse shows held here. Every village in the West has its show and no one in the area would dream of missing it. Whether they come to show their ponies, dance, see their friends or simply join in what is virtually a Kaylee with horses. It might seem a long way to the green, rolling hills of Malvern in the plump English Midlands, but the link between Clanderduff and Worcestershire is the Connemara Pony. This is the annual championship show of the English Connemara Pony Society. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to two very generous and very great supporters of our show, Mr and Mrs Frank Joyce from Ireland. This event celebrates the Golden Jubilee of the ECPS, founded exactly 50 years ago, and still going from strength to strength. For a breed society without a geographical anchor in its own country, the annual championship is a particularly important meeting place. Owners and breeders come from every corner of the UK to compare notes, renew old rivalries, make new friends, and just share their common love of the Connemara. The ECPS currently has around 1,200 members, all of whom are dedicated to this versatile, generous, all-round pony. It is probably hard for them to imagine what a hostile environment the founders of the society were operating in when they began work in 1947. The UK was struggling to return to normality after six years of war. Food was still rationed and leisure scarce. At that time, there were already eight native pony breeds in the country and many skeptics doubted whether there was really any need at all for a ninth. Cynthia Spottiswood was the virtual founder of the society, a strong-minded woman who seemed to have no fixed address and moved between various parts of England and the west of Ireland, almost like a gypsy. In 1947, two stallions, 13 mares and one aged gelding were entered in the NPS records. These earliest imports had to work hard for their initial success and recognition, but they travelled to national shows all over Britain and set the ball rolling. To see the Jubilee show, with its hundreds of entries in both showing and ridden classes, would surely produce both amazement and affection in these early pioneers, one or two of whom are still active in the society. Of course, the trade and traffic within Connemara itself has never ceased. There are always dozens of Irish faces and voices at the championship show. It is a compliment to the English society that some even come to buy ponies from the junior branch.
Give it to me on Sunday, the winner of the three-year-old Gelding Park and the Tristan Trophy. I changed. I changed. Class one. Class one. Who's taking that too? If we can have a photo of it going to the farm. Are you not going to show us the glass? I hope it's finished until now. I'm able to do that. But there is a strong opinion in the Connemara's homeland that the line of strength and resilience that characterises the breed needs to be renewed and refreshed in their own native environment. Mochi Ni has been breeding and showing ponies in his home village since he was a small boy. The Connemara pony is a very popular breed in Ireland, and especially in Connemara here itself. You know, they can breed them anywhere else, but they're not fit to breed them like the Connemara. But it's the climate, really, and the environment and the way they grow up tough. They have to be tough to survive in it. It was in 1947 that Phyllis Mead imported Connemara ponies into England. A lot of them, people used them on their farms. Some of them used them to haul uh, seaweed, which they used on the, uh, as a fertilizer. And they went and hauled it on the backs of the ponies and brought it home that way. Other people used them for taking their milk to market on a churn back of the, of the vehicle. Uh, and others, well, use them as transport to go to the local shops. I went to Connemara, not really intending to look for a pony. I happened to go to the breed show, and there I saw a lot of very useful ponies, and I thought something like that would come in very handily to use at home. And so um, we bought two back on that occasion. We went back the following year and we bought four back. Mm -hmm. If you became friends with the people you bought from, then they certainly wanted you to have good ponies of theirs to take back and to use and for them to hear and see the results of selling them to, to us. They were, no they were very cheap too. We bought uh, one that had won in the show ring there uh, for 40. That was a very high price in those days. And the first one that we brought back was our foundation mare that bred many of the animals we've had since. We bred our own stock nearly all the way through our, our time with them. Uh, our chief stallion, Lean Bobby Finn, we bred ourselves. Uh, we bred our best mare ourselves. And so it, it has been our own thing, really. The British Equestrian Centre at Stoneley in Warwickshire was the venue for the first principal event of the ECPS Jubilee year. Put your name down for one of the books that are only available today on order. There were stands selling Pat Lyons' Connemara books and other material. What, what are you going to have? You're going to have a book? Yes, I'm going to have one of these and one of these. One of those. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful man. And what's your um, Christian name? Christine. Christine. Have you got a phone? Christine? Yes, I have. I've got a um, mare by Lean Junior. A mare by Lean Bobby Finn. Yes. A mare by Tessa Woodman. Oh. And a mare by Mervyn Kingsville. Oh, what a nice. great variety. You're down, you're down, down so near well. the Minsmere style. Farmer was also very successful in show in Britain and in classes. And performance awards being. Then great to go to the Dan has a look at the side, Supreme Champion Spinway Comet in his head, has his super blue from each of both. Number 10 is Glenburn McDermott, owned by Miss Blackburn from Chichester, West Sussex. 
is five zero by number Limoy, who is by Atlantic Rebel out of Argentina. Dan is Milford Gypsy Mom by Mervyn Spawn out of Mervyn Dragon. Number 11 is the 6 year old Valley Morgan Rica. The stallion parade was intended to be both a workmanlike parade of the best stud animals for those involved with breeding of Connemaras, and also as a showcase for the very best animals that the society had produced. In both roles, it was a triumphant success, with well over 40 stallions shown, and over half of these entered in a second ridden display. Amongst the big crowd were many Connemara breeders and owners who had come over from other European countries for the big day. One of them was Jean-Francois Mar, president of the French Connemara Pony Society. Why have you come all the way from France to this event? Pourquoi est-ce que nous sommes venus de France pour cet événement? Eh bien, tout simplement parce que nous avons été invités à cette parade des talents. First, because we were invited et que nous voulions nous, nous rendre compte un petit peu de, de ce qu'il y avait en Angleterre puisque nous venons régulièrement au national depuis trois ans au national anglais. We wanted Donc, to see the quality of the stallions of England and because we like to come and that we try to come every year to the national show of uh, the English Connemara Pony Society. And what do you think of the stallions? Qu'est-ce que tu as pensé des étalons que tu as vu aujourd'hui? Ah ben moi ça m'a fait très plaisir de voir toute une une gamme importante des, des géniteurs euh, étalons euh, anglais. I am I was very pleased to see such a wide range of uh, quality top stallion and I was very happy to see that uh, parade. How how many years have there been Connemara ponies in France? I can answer to that. <laughs> uh, we'll ask About 30 to 35 years. And um, most studs have started about 28 years ago. And are they becoming popular in France? They've been popular since the beginning. Ils demandent que si les les élevages Connemara sont si le poney Connemara est très populaire en France. Oui, depuis le début. Depuis le début et et en particulier depuis ces dernières années où nous nous classons toujours dans les premiers dans les épreuves sportives. And especially um, since the last a few years, because in competitions Connemara. Um, are always 20% of the victories are Connemara ponies. So Connemara pony is very popular in France. Ask anyone in the horse world to describe a typical Connemara, and the first word will be grey. There is no colour that represents the pure breed, although it is worth noting that true jet blacks do not occur in Connemaras. One distinguished visitor attending the Stallion Parade was Arnold Garvey, editor of Horse and Hound magazine and a great enthusiast for the Connemara. The, uh, the native breeds of Britain have always been important, but of all, all of them, the, the Connemara is, is, the, is the one that has come forward into competition, perhaps along with the Welsh, some of the Welsh breeds. But uh, as everybody who's ridden a Connemara knows, they've got that fifth leg, which if you're hunting or eventing, is vital. They have wonderful temperaments 
and um, they, they ride like horses, they can stride, they cross beautifully with a thoroughbred. It's the perfect cross you know, for riding horses, hunters, eventers, show jumpers. They're great performers. Post-war equestrianism um, uh, took off after the war. Um, up to then, they'd been um, racing and hunting and a bit of polo. But show jumping eventing didn't exist. It was a post-war phenomenon. And people wanted to enjoy their horses after the war and they needed ponies for their children to ride and there was no better pony to, to bring over and it's just gone from there and in fact really the Connemara is now an international breed it's gone to Canada, America, Australia, South Africa even the Continentals love Connemaras now as you know the temperament is half a horse you know if you haven't got a, a horse with a sensible temperament who doesn't get excited then you're going to have problems and the Connemara has a wonderful temperament Wonderful bone, wonderful constitution. He's an athletic horse, he's a fun horse to ride. See you in a minute. Back in the arena, interest was building up for part two of the day's activities, the ridden display. It can only have improved the breed's reputation for good manners and amiability to see so many full stallions on their best behavior and jumping effortlessly. that wasn't proof enough of the versatility of the Connemara, the day's finale was a musical interlude by an experienced trooper who was never going to put a hoof wrong.
goes to Paul Grant Perret. Shipton Connemara Stud in Gloucestershire has been a centre of excellence for the breed for more than half the past 50 years. In her tranquil Cotswold home, surrounded by the animals she loves so much, Mrs Elizabeth Beckett has devoted endless time to the improvement of the breed. The environment is slow, sleepy, and definitely rural. Nothing is too much trouble for the ponies, many of whose names are like a roll of honor within the breed society. Atlantic Sentinel, who came direct from Ireland as a colt, is still at Shipton with Mrs. Beckett. The stallion had a huge influence on the breeding of Connemara's in Britain, and although now aged 31 and retired from active duty, is still very much the elder statesman of the property. Having founded the stud in 1968, Mrs. Beckett allowed herself a less than generous period of seven years in which to earn it a first class reputation. She always maintained that she would not bother with the necessary time, money and effort just to breed mediocre ponies from the neat post and rail fencing to the dedicated staff, the 60-acre farm just to the south of Stroud is run to the highest professional standards. Mrs. Beckett received her earliest equestrian training from her father's groom and has been a horsewoman all her life. I studied the stud, stud book um, completely um, and worked out what lines went with what other lines and then I got my first Connemaras from Ireland. Um, I got in touch with the secretary over there who um, sent me over Atlantic Sentinel, who is still with, uh, as a stallion, who is um, still with us at the age of 31 and is my McDara um, and Bay, so he can't have blue-eyed cream foals. And uh, I've slowly collected up the mares since then. It's an expensive hobby. I've never made any money out of them, and um, they cost a fair amount of money, but that's the way I like to spend it. And I've now got about 12 broodmares, and most of which I've bred myself. There is a Connemara type, and you've got to want to try and keep to it. It's defined in the stud book as to what, what an animal should look like, and you want to get as near to that as possible. You've got to have adequate bone and they want nice short cannon bones. They want to have nice heads and, 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 and um, nice long necks which aren't too thick. Um, they, 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 it's very difficult to find quality actually. You've got to move re really from the shoulders and really ex extend and be completely straight. The, the, the majority of the Connemaras have a super temperament but of course, in every breed, you don't, not every animal is the same, but on the whole, um, they do have very unflappable temperaments and, and, and are absolutely ideal for children to ride. But the bigger ones ride like a, like a thoroughbred does, or, or riding horse does. And they make such a super riding animal for the grown-up who doesn't want a horse. And that's why so many of them are being ridden by 
by grown-ups. Pat Line has also devoted a good deal of her life to the Connemara pony. Well, I don't know whether you've seen the Connemara Chronicle, our um, journal, but I was the one who suggested we should have our own journal, and I was given the job of editing it, which I did for 12 years. And during that time, the number of people who wrote to me saying, this is lovely, but could you tell me where I could write, buy a book to learn more about the breed? And I couldn't tell them because there wasn't such a thing. Um, that I sat down and started to try and do it. But I'm not really a writer, I mean, it's just my love of the pony that's um, produced the books. I um, was in the horse trade, I trained point to pointers and show hacks and hunters, etc. And I was just on holiday with a friend, and we ended up in Uterard, <laughs> which is the sort of gateway to Connemara, and, and saw this one golden dun pony who I fell in love with. And um, she shortly took over my life. <laughs> I can remember the Gagans from whom I bought her uh, went to fetch the herd in off the hills. And old Mark Gagan, who was then in his late 70s, uh, got himself aboard a gelding with no saddle and a rusty old bit and nothing much else, a bit of string on the bit, you know, to his hands. And he brought the whole herd in riding this gelding and they just came down the road trotting as gently as you could wish. And it was just a very lovely picture, you know. There's something special about them. But I also love Connemara, and I love the Connemara people. And I go back again and again. I've just been there now for 10 days. There's a greatly relaxed feeling. There's plenty of time for everything. Never any hurry. You're always welcome. And the number of tables I've sat round to eat soda bread and taste the pochine and talk about the Connemara ponies is numberless. They used to live as family, you know. They were an indispensable part of life. Uh, they drew the sidecar to mass, they pulled the plough, they bred a foal a year, they hauled the seaweed from the shore, they did everything, and the family could not exist without them. It's made a tremendous impact, the pony. It really has. I think because they always lived with the family, as the family, this is bred in them. And I think everybody you would speak to on this ground here today would say the same thing. My life is ten times better since I had a Connemara pony. You know, he's a great friend and gives me a lot of fun. Every animal is inspected before it's registered. And I was there last week watching the stallion inspections, which is a very vital moment. And I like to go over for Clifton, which is the third Thursday in August every year. They, they weren't a trained riding pony when we first imported them, you know. They, they really had been only a work pony. And in a way, we have upgraded them. Um, and, and they are now a super riding pony, but they, have, they are an improved breed. Another enthusiast is Lady Zoya Hellings, chairman of the ECPS. I had one as a child, I rode one as a child, and then I had a part bred, which is cross with a thoroughbred. Um, um, I don't know, I think once you've had one, you'll always have one. All those combined enthusiasms came together at Malvern for the biggest celebration in the society's history. Despite the showing classes having finished only minutes earlier and many dinner guests having had to rush straight from stable or lorry to the table, there was a wonderful atmosphere of conviviality, good fellowship and mutual enjoyment of the breed's wonderful success 
in the wider world. So what of the next 50 years for the Connemara? The American Society lists the address of its Connemara pony site on the World Wide Web and the South African group founded only eight years ago is even spreading into neighboring Lesotho. As Arnold Garvey said, what is hard to believe about the Connemara is not how popular the pony has become, but how quickly it has become an absolutely firm establishment in the equestrian world. The first half century has passed in the twinkling of an eye, and the next is on course to go even faster and more successfully.